Hi, welcome to our show. Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. We just arrived on site. This is our first day here. We're in a trailer park in Bullhead City, Arizona. Um, these are long-term leases for these spots, uh, up to 10-year leases. So this trailer is going to be here quite a while, I suspect. It's going to get some skirting around it eventually, but for now we're just going to extend the concrete patio out about nine feet it's going to be nine feet by eight feet total so it's a small little area but they need it just to bring down the steps out of that slider door there's a two doors there's a single door and then there's a slider we're working outside that slider door and if you notice that peacock there's a male and female um, they were hanging around all day they actually walked through the concrete when we left for lunch while it was drying and you'll see those footprints possibly um, in, in, in the near future. This gravel is pretty loose here. I'm just back dragging it out of here, being careful not to hit the trailer. You could dig this out by hand pretty easily because it was pretty loose. But, you know, since I have a tractor, I'm just going to use it anyway. But this is something you could DIY if you have a lot of energy to do something like this. We're gonna hand mix this. I'm just gonna bring my little mini mixer and we can mix about five uh, 60 pound ready mix bags in it at a time. So we can do one wheelbarrow basically per load. And that's how we'll mix this up. Here's a chunk of the existing concrete that was missing. We're gonna let the new concrete flow right into that. Let's patch that corner up. So I just started digging in the corner there. That way I can get a line stake in or at least my uh, two by four. Since we have a two by four cut, for the length of this project, we're just going to use it for a screed to start with to get the ground level. I have Eric the chef with me today and he will be uh, mixing the concrete while I place it. So all this wood I've found so far is just scrap that was uh, repurposed for this job. Instead of cutting the wood, I just slid it back on the side of the existing patio a little bit more. That should be good, right? Yeah. Here, you try this one. So I know you got to be careful, man. Sometimes the wood will split on you. Yeah, that's why I'm like pulling you. Pulling and you'll it slam your hand. Oh, I already hit my thumb right here. Oh, you know what else? When you're hitting it, you want to put your hand back further because if you miss a stake, if you're right here, you end up going just like that. True. So I usually try to, I usually choose two hands. That way, if I miss, I have a strength to hold it from hitting me in the, sh in the leg. Yeah, true. Because what you want to do with a sledgehammer is have two hands usually on it in case you miss the stake or it glances off. With two hands, you could stop it from hitting you in the leg. With one hand, you're not gonna be able to stop that momentum of the sledge from hitting yourself in the shin. I've seen a lot of people do that and uh, they don't like it too much when it happens. I'm using number six duplex nails i have wood stakes which is kind of nice because that means you can put the nail anywhere you want at any angle you want to avoid obstacles now this is a 16 duplex on my end the duplex is for easy stripping 
easy to pull the nails out, reuse everything again. And you can really tell how um, used this 2x4 is, how twisted it is. But the main concern is the top edge of it. I'm not too concerned about how vertical or plumb it is. Mostly um, looking at that top edge because everything's going to get backfilled up to the top of concrete. So visibly the side, it's yes. not that crucial okay. with that top edge. You can look down. That's what you're going for as far as straightness is concerned. Here's some leftover wire mesh from a previous job. And it's not fun working with wire mesh. Yeah. It can spring back on you, cut you, poke an eye out if you don't hold it down. Um, a lot of things can go wrong with wire mesh. Unless you're buying the flat. They do sell flat um, 10 gauge or 6 gauge. A flat 6 gauge. They're 20 foot long. So transportation's a challenge. Um, you can get the rolls just about anywhere. Pretty yeah. readily yeah. available. But those are the ones you got to watch out for. On this side of the trailer right here. This is just a little additional thing. Since I had my tractor here. The uh, homeowner asked if I could uh, just level this area out because they want to build a shed over here. So I said, sure, why not? I'm here. I got my tractor and it's, you know, easy, easy work. Now, if she said, you know, if I was do out here shoveling by hand, I would have probably t had second thoughts. You know, like, oh man, do I really want to swing that shovel for another hour? But since I had this piece of equipment, I just, yeah, let's just do it. Slight hill sloped towards the trailer. So I had to cut into the embankment a little bit. I put the loose at the low end. Then I put the bucket down to kind of temp compact it a little and flatten it out. Back bladed it. And now it's ready to um, set that shed on there. The actual owner that's living in this trailer, he's a Vietnam or actually, I don't know if he's a Vietnam veteran, but he is a veteran, I know that. Well, I don't know if he served in any conflicts or anything, but he may have, because he's in that age group. Well, here's the chef mixing the magic solution for the concrete pour. One thing I noticed about uh, as he was mixing this up, he had a lot of backsplash on him. And I recommended he bring his apron on the next one. And we've already since did another one. And he did bring the apron, which you'll see in the next video. It worked like a charm, too. Here's the mix. I'm using it's all quick creep product. What I'm doing is two bags of the regular concrete mix to one and a half bags of the quick setting mix makes for a really nice finish um, nice and creamy it's a high psi and it dries a lot quicker if i just used the straight uh, concrete not the quick dry it would have been kind of gritty not as creamy and then it would have stood there for you know a few hours just drying but with this mix, um, it all happens a little quicker and you get a little more cream to the top. All right, now I'm just trying to get it as flat as possible before I put a screed on there. Because I'm gonna be running the screed uh, solo on this, I wanna try to do the shovel work as close as possible, catch the edges on the way out, and then just slap an eight footer on here and rot, screed it out. You can see a little um, residual water on top of the concrete while I'm hand floating. That's because as I dumped the wheelbarrows of concrete, I had a little splatter on the um, tires of this trailer. It'll be covered with skirting, but um, I washed it all down before I uh, proceeded or before the concrete got hard, you might say. See that mess the chef made on himself? That's why I recommended the uh, apron. And, uh, 
he did use it and it worked out great right there around that stake because my lumber was so twisted i had to put an inside kicker to hold it hold this form straight and uh i packed some concrete in behind that stake that way when i pull the stake out as this concrete gets hard hard enough to hold it hold the wood in place i'll pull that stake out and then pack the hole so i have it poured out completely so now's a good time to edge it without having to shimmy along the trailer in a later you know time we got enough concrete in here now to actually screed this off and it's a slow process you know when you're mixing a wheelbarrow at a time because you can't you have to let it mix you got to get enough revolutions in there to get a good mix We're mixing this pretty stiff, so I'm kind of juicing it up with my hand float before I hit it with the screed. Now, if this was a real flowable wet mix, then I wouldn't really have to keep sprinkling back into these holes. It would have just flowed there automatically. Basically, on when I'm running that hand float, I'm just working off the known elevations, which is usually the perimeter, so I know I have something there to match. So that's the whole idea. I'm kind of coming in off the edges that way. When I pull my screed, I'm not losing a lot of material off the edges and um, making it easier to pull the screed back because I'm putting it on the money on the edges. As I went through here, I pulled the wire <coughs> mesh up. As I came, every wheelbarrow, we just pulled the wire up a little. My wire hook, which I use, it's uh, actually for a fifth wheel detach hook. That's what I typically use to reach through, but since we were on a really slow pour process, I, I was able just to lift it up as we went. And uh, Eric was using the probe or the fifth wheel hook to break the clods in the mixer as it was turning. It worked great for that too. So you can see the water already, the surface, the water coming up from the concrete starting to kind of puddle up bleed water so that tells me that the concrete is uh it's drying out really fast and that's because we're using that one and a half bags of quick quick crete quick setting concrete to the um two bags of the regular we had four bags left over my calculations were a little off so i had four bags to return but what I do with the bag mixes is I get the pallet every time and then I usually over order. And then I just have them slip it into the back of my truck or trailer in this case. Whatever's left over, I have them forklift it off, return it for a full refund, get the pallet, deposit back. And it makes it like when you're holding loose material, sand, gravel, and you're buying bags of cement. What do you do with all this excess stuff, you know, unless you have a lot of storage space? That's why I like using bags. You don't you, you don't have any waste. Once I get this bowl floated down and edged and looking real good, then we'll go and uh, get some lunch, come back and see if it's ready to start troweling. This is a four foot bowl float and it's magnesium with a rocker arm. Now here's your 10 inch wide half inch radius walking edger which is ideal for along this trailer because i can't reach out far enough to catch it from both ends by hand so when you got a pull on your edger you can reach these hard to get places now this concrete mix doesn't really have any fly ash but the good news is that eric's introducing it um uh, with uh with the cigarette ashes so we're kind of getting that same that same feel 
in the concrete that you typically would, but we just add the ash, you know, manually. Now here's a funny float, similar to the funny trowel, but instead of steel, this is uh, fiberglass. The difference on what it does to the concrete is this one's actually gonna help you flatten and level, and it's gonna bring up a little more cream to the top. And once you get that nice cream at the top and nice and flat, then you can hit it with a steel, which is what this is. This is your funny trowel. S real same thing as a hand trowel. The only real difference is it has a pole on it. So you're not, you don't really have to get down on your hands and knees and you can extend poles so you could reach, you know, a lot further distances. Oh, if you look closely, you'll see Oh, okay, just behind that, you could see the footprints of the peacock. We've already trailed them out since, but uh, when we got back from lunch, um, those, that's where the peacock had walked across the concrete. Look how nice this concrete looks, though. For a hand mix, it's a nice-looking mix. So it's the blend of the two bags that makes it so, so good. A little low point right here I noticed when we we're adjoining the two concretes and I like them nice and flat you know that way it doesn't really become a trip hazard and I don't know what that hole was that Eric's filling there but it might have been um, might have been the peacock footprint well, actually it's a road runner those, those are road runners but they're in the bird family. So the last part that we poured was a little bit too wet to broom. And that's because it was an hour long process of it just getting the concrete into that little hole. So the top portion where we started um, dried first. Now we're gonna go ahead and strip it. We're not even completely broomed out at this point. But since we're waiting for the bottom portion to dry, this is a good time to start stripping. If anything fell on top of the concrete, when I go to do the final broom, I can just brush it off. The wood came away nicely. You notice how I have the sand built up on the outside of the two by four already. That way I don't have to uh, shovel it in there and have a chance of it going everywhere on top of the concrete while it's still fresh. So in other words, once I get done here, I won't have to go back. I'm going to grade it, come up to the top of concrete, and uh, strip and clean, and uh, get the check and hit the highway. You notice the corner of the patio. You can't even really tell that was there. Once it cures out, it'll even be less visible. There it is, ready to put some patio furniture out there or drop some stairs off of that slider door. It's good to go. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. That way you'll get a chance to see the video first when we upload it. Have a good one.